it started many years ago. After my um, first degree, I started working with the trade unions. I did a master's working on issues of uh, labor and economic development. And that time in Zimbabwe, we were introducing or we were implementing structural adjustment programs. It is from that background that I developed an interest in both employment issues and resource distribution within the country. And then it just built on and on like that. You know, maybe the main things that uh, are happening now are that the government has been trying to reduce the level of inequality within the country. If you look at uh, what they inherited at independence in 1990, very high and equal, highly unequal society, and this could have been between a rural and urban or between different ethnic groups. They've come up with some development programs where the main target is reducing inequality as well as reducing the level of poverty over time. So that, those are some of the issues that we are looking at, including uh, the distribution of access to resources as well has been, is, is quite topical now, particularly access to land as a way of trying to empower the people who were initially marginalized from accessing it. Um, if you look at uh, the case of Namibia, generally the economy has been growing significantly over the past uh, 10 or so years, positive growth. But then if you look at the rate at which inequality has been going, um, yes, there's been a decline, but perhaps not as much as we would have expected, given the rate of growth that has been there. And if you look at uh, poverty as well, there has been a decline, but there are certain pockets of poverty that are quite persistent. And it's likely that the high um, good performance on the poverty and inequality um, sphere that have been realized over the past 10, 15 years may become more difficult to achieve in the future because now we'll be looking at those other uh, pockets where it's not so easy to reach, particularly with growth, uh, the way it has been over the past few years. And it's worse that the growth has generally been um, jobless, so to say, because employment has not been performing as much as we would have expected in order to distribute that growth to households. Generally, I think there is that realization within the country that uh, although mining is a big sector within the economy, its level of employment has generally been low, particularly because of the capital intensity that you find in that sector. And in a way, you would understand why it may be like that, because the level of human capital within the country is also problematic. It's generally on the low side. Technical skills that the miners may want, they are not there. So the government is generally focused on four main areas where it thinks they can be used as drivers of economic growth. If you look at, sorry, drivers of employment, they talk of the tourism sector, they talk of agriculture, then uh, they also talk uh, of manufacturing and transport and logistics as areas where there is comparative advantage that the country can exploit to try and grow the uh, level of employment. What we've been trying to understand is how the government can deal with the level of poverty within the country. And the main or the flagship uh, social assistance that you get there is the old, uh, old people's pensions. That uh, pension is given to individuals who are 60 years and above. And the main intention being to reduce poverty among that group was the retirement ages at 60. So what we are finding is generally it does help reduce uh, poverty in those households, but not to the extent that it would have um, had if the other um, sections of the economy were doing well. You'll find that uh, in some households that pension is the main source of income. And it's spread thinly across a lot of people and it will not um, as much reduce poverty. But relative to other sources of income within households, we realize it does have a positive impact on inequality. And I think the main thing is to try and see how best the resources within the country can be distributed more equally or at least accessible to the majority of the people. 
you'll find in a, a, an economy where much of the resources are being exploited, say, by international companies or multinational companies, and the profits, therefore, are channeled straight out without a mechanism of ensuring that, uh, one, they can be used for the local development. That can be problematic. And two, if there is no way of beneficiating resources that are, earned within, uh, that are produced within the country and in the process create jobs, that can also be a problem. So I hope other countries will learn that there, is, there may be need not only to harness the resources for, to finance development within the country, but also to increase the level of beneficiation of the resources so that more jobs are created and then the value chain will be such that more people get in and they at least get a share of the resources in that country. Uh, it's of great importance in terms of not only networking with people who are already working in poverty, but we realize there's a lot of uh, development uh, taking place within the UN wider uh, researchers group in terms of developing new methodologies, new approaches to analyzing things, which will make it a lot easier for some of us who are maybe on the applied side that the methods have been developed and then you can try to apply them. So networking becomes a very important source of uh, personal growth in terms of uh, research. Mm -hmm.